Okay, Good morning, Divine Shanti. So today we will be reading a mostly cited 10th, 12th, 1979. So the title of the Murli is uh, The Qualification of a Pure and Chattable Soul. So Baba is uh, explaining about the uh, Punyatma election. Okay, and uh, Papa says uh, in this Murli, uh, not to waste our thoughts, but to use them in a you know, powerful way. And Baba is clearly explaining about uh, each and every qualities of a pure and charitable soul, how and uh, what are the qualities of a pure soul and uh, a charitable soul is. And they accumulate Every um, thing in them, uh, in our, you know, in their every thought and uh, in every word, every second, they keep accumulating. They will be always, um, you know, not just used for themselves, but donated to others. You know, and uh, use all their, uh, you know, powers um, to enrich um, other souls other poor souls. And Baba is also explaining uh, in this Murli um, how one is misusing the godly authority, you know, for the self-interest or um, or own pleasure and comfort. And um, yeah, and very, very beautifully Baba is explaining in this Murli what is godly authority is and how it is used and how it is misused. So, um, without much um, delay, let's get started. Sorry. <laughs> the qualification of a pure and charitable soul. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you. So today, uh, Bhaktad is looking at his most elevated, great, pure, and charitable souls. So we, uh, today we are, um, you know, we can uh, <clears throat> create these thoughts that today we are the most elevated, great souls, pure soul, and charitable souls. So there are a couple of points that which Bhaktad is, um, you know, explaining through the uh, the qualification so first point is a pure and charitable soul means a soul who accumulates in his account of charity in every thought at every second and who also inspires others to accumulate in their account not just accumulate um, for them but also enable others or inspire others to accumulate in their account and the second point, Baba says, to be a pure and charitable soul means to be a great donor who accumulates in his account of charity by giving some or other treasures. You know, so they be the uh, donors, and um, you know, whatever um, accumulates right in their account, so giving it all the treasures that they have accumulated. <clears throat> And a third point, a pure and um, charitable soul means to be a soul through whose eyes is constantly revealed the image of Bhaktada. Constantly revealed the image of Bhaktada. And whose face constantly revealed Bhaktada's mm -hmm. character. His awareness is as powerful as the father's. His words are always jewels of knowledge. Uh, they are always invaluable. Uh, what Baba is saying, their uh, image, you know, uh, reveal Bhaktada, their face reveals Bhaktada's character. Awareness is very powerful, as powerful as Father. And uh, words, you know, jewels, jewels of knowledge. 
and uh, they are always invaluable. You know, uh, his actions and behavior are always equal to the father. Mm -hmm. Every action they perform, they will be showcasing the father, equal to the father. His attitude is constantly that of a world benefactor. Like, if, like the father, he is a benefactor at every second and in every thought. With his rays of mercy, he removes the darkness of sorrow and peacelessness from everywhere. With his rays of mercy, he removes the darkness of sorrow and peacelessness from everywhere. And then the fourth point, Baba says, a pure and charitable soul would use his own treasure of charity to enrich many poor souls. Mm -hmm. To enrich many poor souls. Uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of strength in even one act of charity of a charitable soul who is an embodiment of knowledge because that soul is a charitable soul on the basis of receiving godly power directly. Okay, now Baba is explaining uh, that how uh, the power, that authority that is used and misused. Okay, so uh, since uh, the copper age, uh, you may have heard about or See how limited kings donated wealth and performed charity indirectly. Those kings had the full power of the authority of their kingdom. No one was able to change their orders. You know, so when uh, the uh, the kings of the copper age, when they their orders has to be fulfilled. So. Um, and so nobody uh, would question that, you know, every order will be fulfilled. So no one was able to change their orders. No matter what uh, those, uh, those kings did to anyone, okay, they could, uh, they could make one person very prosperous and put someone else on the gallows. They had the authority to do both. You know, they had the authority to do both they could make someone prosperous and someone on gallows. And uh, then Baba says they had the authority of indirect donation and charity, which they used correctly at the beginning of the corporate. Mm -hmm. They used it at the beginning of the corporate. They used it correctly. Gradually, however, they started to use the authority of their kingdom indirectly. Now, this is why, since it is the end, their authority has now finished. The kings who receive their authority of a uh, kingdom indirectly had so much power that they were able to make their subjects and their families happy and peaceful temporarily. Temporarily, okay. So though they were the authorities, they were the kings, um, you know, the Baba says indirectly got it. Okay, which means they would have did a lot of donation and in return Baba would have given them the uh, the, the authority of the kingdom and then and they can make uh, enable whoever they want to make, you know, somebody they can make it a prosperous and poor and all that. So Baba says here, um, um, yeah, the kings who had received their authority of a kingdom indirectly had so much power that they were able to make their subjects uh, and their families happy and peaceful temporarily. They could do it temporarily, make them happy and peaceful. Similarly, all of you pure and charitable souls, you great donors have received special authority directly from the father to become conquerors of ma conquerors of matter and maya. So you have received almighty authority and on the basis of your almighty authority, that is on the basis of your treasure of charity and with your pure thoughts, you are able to make any soul become whatever you want. Hmm? 
So on the basis of your treasure of charity, with your pure thoughts, Baba says, with your pure thoughts, you are able to make any soul become whatever you want. One third of yours has so much power that you can enable souls to forge a relationship with their father and make them become prosperous with all treasures. You can enable souls to forge a relationship with the father. This is underlined. And make them uh, and make them become prosperous with all treasures. Right? Those things would issue a command, right? You just have to create a thought. They have to issue a command, but whereas we have to just create a thought. Just as they could command whatever they wanted to happen, so too, because you have received your godly rights directly. Baba said godly rights directly. You can uplift other souls as much as you want with just one. As much as you want with just one thought. You are such elevated souls, are you not? Huh? So Baba is underlying and emphasizing that you are such elevated souls, are you not? However, why does this not happen in a practical way? Now Baba is um, saying the reason why it doesn't happen the way, though we are powerful and elevated souls. So the reason so Baba is going to explain you have been given all rights and almighty authority. So why are you not able to use them? What is the reason for this? Why has this elevated form of service not yet begun? You must use the power of thought and not misuse it. You must use the power of thought and not misuse it. Baba says, use it, the power of thought. Don't misuse it. Throughout history, whenever someone was not able to make proper use of um, his authority, the main uh, reason was that he had misused his authority. You know, the misuse of authority, right? That is what, um, if you check the history everywhere, um, so if somebody has lost their power or kingdom, it's because of the main reason is the misuse. Uh, what was the reason why kings lost their kingdom, politicians lost their seat, seats, and uh, dictators lost their authority? They stopped doing their real work and began to indulge themselves in their own pleasure and comforts. Mm -hmm. They start using it for their own, their own pleasure and comfort for their self-interest, self-motive. They began to depend on one thing or another themselves and thereby lost their rights. Because they became influenced, they misused their rights. Mm -hmm. It's because of the influence they start misusing their rights. In the same way, all of you charitable souls have received authority from the Father at every second and in every thought. You have received the authority. You have received all rights. But you don't use that authority accordingly with the understanding of its real value. Hmm? Very good point. Baba says, you have received the authority, you have received all rights, but you don't use that authority according, accordingly with the understanding of its value. When you carelessly misuse something on a trivial matter for your own pleasure and comfort, or if you start thinking or speaking wastefully, you then become unable to use 
um, either your treasure of charity that you have accumulated or the godly authority that you have been given as you should. Hmm? So another thing Baba says, um, uh, thinking and uh, speaking of wasteful, you know, that also become a reason for us to uh, lose our godly authority. And that is also a means of misusing it. Okay. Okay. The elevated thoughts of elevated Brahmins are the instruments to draw the line of fortune of other souls. You know, this elevated thoughts of elevated Brahmins, you know, those thoughts are, Baba says, draw the line of fortune of other souls. One thought of yours is like a switch that you can put on and thereby remove all darknesses within a second. And then the fifth point, the thoughts of a pure and charitable souls are like a spiritual magnet that can attract other souls to spirituality, spiritual magnet. Attract, right? That can attract other souls to spirituality. And the sixth one, the thought of a pure and charitable soul are like a lighthouse that can show the true destination to souls who are wandering around. Lighthouse that can show destination, true destination, Baba says to souls, especially who are wandering around. Seventh one, the thoughts of a pure and charitable soul are so ex um, exceptionally cool and serene. So they are able to cool down who are burning in the fire of wise. You will answer in the says. And with that you are able to cool down. Cool down. Souls are burning in the fire of wise. And the eighth one, the thoughts of a pure and charitable soul are such elevated weapons, you know, that they can release tied and bound souls from all, all their bondages and set them free. You know, this work like a, our pure and charitable souls, right? Their thoughts work like a weapon which can release you know, tied bond souls from their bondage and set them free. See the power of thoughts. Okay, it's like a weapon, elevated weapon. Just as this ninth one, just as the magic mandra makes the impossible possible, so too the thoughts of a pure and charitable soul have such special power that they can make impossible things Possible, impossible thing, possible. By practicing the great mantra that disciplines the mind, they are able to make souls who are under one or another influence fly like a firefly. Great magic mantra, impossible, which makes impossible possible. And then the tenth one, just as present day. Missionary is able to change a desert into grassland and can enable flowers to grow high up as a high up on a mountain. So too, with the elevated thoughts of you pure and sad charitable souls, cannot um, cannot those in whom there um, there is no hope have hope. Hmm? So, uh, you know, this uh, missionary, right, Papa says the missionary, right, using the missionary that, that can change the desert to grassland and uh, grow flowers there, in, uh, uh, you know, um, high on, on a mountain. 
right? Similarly, our thoughts, right? Pure and uh, rechargeable souls, right? We can um, create hope in those who do not have hope. In this way, increase your account of charity at every second and use every thought and every second, knowing their value. Ah, um, any task that multi-millionaires of today cannot accomplish can be accomplished by just one thought of you, souls. One thought of yours can make another soul into a multi-millionaire. So, how elevated is your power of thought? Hmm? Baba says, one thought of yours can make another soul into a multi-millionaire. Whether you accumulate in your account and inspire others to accumulate in theirs or whether you waste it, waste it is up to you. Whether you accumulate or inspire others to accumulate or you waste it, it's all up to you. Those who waste it, right, will have to repent. Whereas those who accumulate in it will swing in the swing of all attainments. Sometimes they will swing in happiness, sometimes in peace and some, and sometimes bliss. Right, and those who waste everything will have to look at their own empty aprons and observe those who are swinging in those swings. All of you are those who, those who will swing, are you not? Baba is asking, you are the ones who will accumulate and enable others to accumulate, right? And that means we all are will swing. In the French um, stage, right? Baba says happiness, you swing in the swing of happiness, in the swing of peace and bliss, so on. Now, Baba is addressing uh, Punjab and UP. Those from Raj, sorry, uh, Rajasthan and UP. Those from Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. Shanti Bajipai. Shall we continue this part of the Murli on Monday? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's take a pause here then. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, for practice. Let's see. Om Shanti. So now it's your turn. Um, you, your and charitable souls can share the points that which you would like to practice for the day. Please feel free to unmute and share. I request everyone to share at least one word or one point, one sentence. We are so elevated souls, great souls, your souls, charitable souls. So two things in today's Murli that 
I'm reflecting here. One is Baba's given a complete, clear 10 point plan to check ourselves as to where we are being pure, elevated souls, great souls. And then he's given us a reminder that any kingdom that has fallen or there's been any downfall um, in uh, the king space or any great soul space is where they have missed where they have misused the authority or where there has been some kind of impurity and that reminds me that there's so many wars that happens in happened in the past even you know whether it was uh, ramayana or mahabharat if we go back and take points there uh, it happened because of some impure thoughts of the souls uh, which allowed which was the base point of these wars to happen. So it's a reminder that Baba has given us to follow the Srimat and be aware, be in the present and be aware every moment and check each of our thoughts even before we think about it. That's the point for me to take back home. Okay. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, so that's the history. Right? So if we look at it, yeah, you rightly said, average on the many <clears throat> charitable souls will become like kings and they rule, but they start using their authority for their own comfort and pleasure. So that's what Baba says, they start misusing it. So here, we Brahmins also misuse our thoughts. So that's why we are unable to enable or make others or you know, um, powerful or uh, make others to accumulate in their account. So we have to make our cross powerful. Very nice. Ami Ben. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Baba says charitable souls are those souls um, who are always in their service for others. They are the children of bestower. And they always think first of others and then theirs. Om Shanti. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. It's like father is best over, right? So the children. So they would constantly, you know, work towards enabling others equal to them, equal to the father. But this is the enrich many to our souls, trying right? to make them powerful, to strengthen them. Every act is charity. You know? There is a thing. Would you like to share? There are some points in the chat box, so I'll read that. So Kirja then says, so much. Um, I, the soul in this body, Vikti, uh, he uh, beats me, Samakta Hua, Ajit Siddhara. Elevated, great, pure, charitable, accumulate in thoughts, donate, giving, reveal the path of powerful awareness, invaluable words, equal actions, work, benefactor, attitude, merciful, purity and charity from corporates, misuse of authority, now. 
special authority directly from father. No need of comments. Just create a thought. And And say, keep it from the Murli. When I misuse something for a trivial matter in carelessness or for your own pleasure and comfort, or if I start thinking or speaking wastefully, I then cannot, unable to or use the accumulated or godly authority, write history, ethics. So, Papa says uh, another uh, for, for us, the Brahmin children. Right? So, the way we misuse is we start uh, thinking wasteful, right? We, um, there's going to be waste. So, and uh, uh, that is also a misuse. When there is waste, is, right, then the, the thoughts are not powerful. And then when the thoughts are not powerful, then we cannot. Uh, uh, enable other souls to accumulate, or we will not be give them. We will not be able to give them experience. That is there. So that is the misuse that I think in this syndrome with confluence is that drama, drama um, will come across. Uh, Radha Mani sister, would you like to share? Yamila sister, Shri Dabai, Chandrakala sister. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Some points I will say. Charitable soul size is constantly revealed the image of uh, Babdada and whose face constantly reveals Babdada's character. His awareness is uh, as powerful as father. Uh, their words always dwells of knowledge, action and behavior are always equal to the father. Their world benefactors as the father in every thought. Uh, they remove the darkness of sorrow from the river. Charitable soul use his own treasure of charity to enrich many poor souls. They are the embodiment of knowledge and the embodiment of hope. Yeah, right. Thank you for sharing that. So um, we all are charitable souls and Baba has clearly explained about all the qualifications and we can check uh, ourselves um, you know, during the day, uh, am I a uh, pure and charitable soul uh, to the extent that Baba would like to see me or where all I should uh, you know, need improvement, what all the um, points that I need to uh, practically apply it in my day-to-day -day life so that I become a great charitable soul. We will become that because Baba says that we are that, right? We were that. And we are that and we will become that. So um, it's just a matter of time that we have to put enough effort to get it. So we are in that in that um, um, journey. To get there, right? Sridhar Bhai, would you like to share one point? And uh, Girija sister says that the spiritual magnet, if you are in charitable, you are like a magnet, right? Lighthouse and lighthouse air conditioner, right? So the spiritual somebody is talking. Om Shanti, Pichit Bhai. Om Shanti. See, if you see, um, I thought the 
I've already put my ideas in the chat box. So I was just waiting for others to share. That's why I didn't unmute. But there was just one thing which uh, attracted me, which I thought, if it's okay, I can just share. Mm, you know, this pure and charitable. See, we are just taking down all these points which Baba has given us, like a Wikipedia. But you know, what is pure? It's purity. So we must first know what is a pure thought. Is a pure thought a positive thought? Is a pure thought not a negative thought? What is purity? What is the measure of purity? How do I know the thought which is there in my mind is pure? So first we have to understand before checking whether all this is there. What do you mean by purity thought? See, if I have a thought of hurting somebody, see, even telling somebody something with a good intention is a pure thought. But telling somebody something to just shut them up is not a pure thought, even though the results are the same. So purity we have to know. Then Baba speaks about charity. If charity, if you see, it's punyatma. So jisme koi, there is not even a single pap, not a single vice. So all these 10 vices should not be there. So first of all, I must be clear before I say, well, so why it is a spiritual magnet? Just that one point if you churn. See, if I am a pure soul, if my intentions are pure, if I have no vices in me, I go in front of somebody, I needn't speak. Automatically, there is an attractive energy flowing from me to that soul. That is the magnet which Baba is talking. And see, and every point what Baba has given over here, it's a very big essay we can write. See, like a lighthouse. Lighthouse means what from the top I have to give rays. A lighthouse, it is so altruistic. It has no ego. It is just there in the middle of the ocean giving light to everyone. What does it get in return? Nothing. It is just there facing the storms and giving. So its intentions are good. Like that are pure thoughts. If you are pure, if you are charitable, you can really give, donate from wherever. Like you can give to the whole world. So each of these points really, if you churn, you know, there are deeper meaning. Um, I, sorry, I just took some more time. I just wanted to go down to the these two points like that. If you see every point, he says air conditioner. I was just thinking, how can it be an air conditioner? So when I'm burning with vices, when I'm just down in sorrow, any pure energy which comes, how it will cool me, it will serene me. It's an air conditioner. I think. This was what, uh, which I couldn't uh, share in the chat box. I'm sharing now. Om Shanti. Yes, Girija, then very well mentioned from your side, you know, any thought which is pure will cool you first, will give you a soothing effect. There will be a serenity and divinity in your own vibes. And while you were sharing this, another reflection that I was getting was, you know, a, for us to check and be aware as to where my thought is pure or certain kind of malayas there is just to check my state of mind and uh, the energy that's there within me. If there is a single space of disturbance, then there is some kind of purity, impurity that has been touched my thought. I think that's the deeper way to look at whether right from the thought level, where is the purity taking direction to. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I agree with you, Raki Ben. But you know what happens? It is not always every soul would like to send impurity, but it happens. So when I'm in a position, when I have to shell out thoughts <clears throat> or shell out things, I just want it to happen. 
I just want the effect to take place. I just want the result to kisi tarah hona hi hai, jo bhi hona hai, hona hai. My intention was pure, but the way I delivered it, that's why Baba said, straight, mahan also. So at that moment, even though I started with a purity, I had no vice in me, but it happens when the delivery takes place, when it goes out of my system, it changes path. That's why Baba says, even every moment hold my hand, then you will see that you can never, never, intention may be pure, but delivery was wrong. We see this even in legal law. My intention was to protect myself, but by mistake, I killed that person. The delivery was wrong. This is what really happens when we give away our thoughts and actions in the process of uh, um, giving out things. Yeah, very well said. Now, if we look at this uh, space, uh, this particular way that you explained, uh, the intentions are good, but while we speak, the tonality of our words speaks more than what our intentions are at times when it's being received from the other end. So even checking at that level, how you're delivering that speech is also very important or that particular is my intention to be very good. I want some kind of transformation in the other soul. But if I'm going to be speaking with that with an angry space, or if I'm shouting on the other soul, is that going to be serving the other soul? At times I may need to be stern, but what tonality am I bringing in the way I'm speaking is also important. Very nice. Yeah. So, um, becoming pure and charitable. Yeah. So it's a really um, great, uh, you know, uh, destination uh, and pure. When somebody says pure, you know, I um, get this Prakash uh, Mani Dabi, this face in front of me. So I, because uh, he located all these qualities, uh, those with uh, that because that is like a magnet, like spiritual magnet. People would love to be with that. And of course, was uh, inspiring others, but also made everyone or uh, those who came in contact with that that used to feel so much power in it. Bijit Bhai, you were just talking about Adi Prakashman. And I was so privileged I could really be so close to her and see her actions. I remember a soul who came to her. I don't want to go into the details. That soul mm -hmm. had actually left the yagya and I mean uh, found uh, some companion and was going. And But they had such love for Dadi. Even after that, they both came to meet Dadi. And you know what Dati said? She knew what was done as in. She said, Acha hai, khush hai, acha lagta hai atma ko, baap yaad hai, jau. Nothing, she said. I was just thinking, like, if such kind of thing happens, how we cast aside, we and end... all nothing. And will you believe that soul visits? Used to visit, come every time, but of course they were no, not allowed. But the soul used to visit until now. The soul has the same feeling towards the yagya. Just see what a way. What was her intention? How did she deliver it? That's why I'm saying we should be subjective in our approach. We should just also, she, when I asked her, she said, Uska role ho hai. She is this, who am I to go and change her script. I, I tell you, it was really mind uh, thing for me. There are so many, even Manur Dadi and all, which uh, I could do. But you said Dadi Prakash Mani. So I just took time to share that one instance which I, which I have seen it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. 
the interest of time, we can go on for meditation. And we uh, you know tomorrow is a Sunday, right? So it's a buffer day for us. So uh, we have a Murli Mandan session, uh, which will be conducted by you know Behan, uh, the Murli dated uh, on uh, on 3, uh, 12, 1979. Three, um, three, twelve, um, nineteen seventy nine. So it will be, um, yeah, it will be tomorrow. So I request uh, everyone to join and then let's take the full benefit. Uh, if you can come prepared so that you can ask some of your doubts and get it clarified. So with that, um, let's move on to meditation. So we'll sit in silence. And then take power from Baba and experience his company. Oh, Shambhu. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Divine Family. We shall connect again tomorrow at 5 a.m. Until then, you all have a great day. Om Shanti.